Uh, I'd like to start giving an answer to Henry for his question earlier. Um, he was wondering if there is still any chance of uh, C32 being phased out, basically establishing a, a C33 plus as the proof of work. And the whole reason for me to change my mind about the, uh, trying to find uh, single chip ASICs uh, is that we now we now happy with single chip ASICs. We we realize that uh, they have a value and a purpose. They uh, don't produce as much heat, so we're happy with that. We're not gonna we're not gonna phase out C32. Uh, so the idea of C33 plus is uh, is is that. In, in multi-python terminology, uh, uh, it is uh, bereft of life, it has ceased to be, etc. Et <coughs> um, so, on to my talk. So, uh, I'm, I, I am John Tron, I uh, invented uh, Kakushaiko. I am the uh, resident uh, ornithologist of, uh, of the Green Project. And um, a few months ago, uh, I was tasked with. Uh, with uh, going out, exploring, and finding a new species of bird. And uh, here we see uh, a new egg being dropped into the into the nest. So this is the. Uh, oops. Can I still go back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this, that is the green uh, aviary of all the proof of work, proof of work birds. So let's see what we uh, came up with. Um, a little background uh, on Green's dual proof of work, which is quite uh, novel in, uh, among all the cryptocurrencies. So you can look at the uh, so called five stages of uh, proof of work grief. So in the good old days, people thought we can write, we can come up with a proof of work that is only feasible on, on, uh, on CPUs. This is uh, what uh, Litecoin set out to do with their adoption of Raspberry. So you think, okay, this is not going to work on GPUs until, of course, people actually try to implement it on GPUs. And then you realize, okay, uh, it's actually either doable on GPU or it's actually quite GPU uh, friendly. Uh, once those GPUs were running as script, uh, it was basically game over for the CPUs. Um, in the case of Monero, it's more interesting in that uh, for a long time the CPUs were actually competitive with uh, GPUs. Uh, at some point, uh, people uh, might uh, get fed up. If the coin really has a philosophy of we have to kill ASICs, then uh, there will be uh, pitchforks and walls to, to kill the, any ASICs that uh, appear. Uh, this has happened to Monero and also recently to uh, Ravencoin. Um, so one way to, to deal with this, um, when your proofs of work, when your proof of work cannot be inherently resistant, you just you just adopt a policy of having uh, regular tweaks to keep on killing the ASICs. Um, so that is still going on with few points. Um, Raven point has just uh, kicked a can down the road by slightly tweaking the proof of work, but they realize this isn't going to last, so they have to already think of a new one. And uh, the last stage is that you just uh, accept ASICs. So many coins that initially claimed ASIC resistant, as soon as the ASICs uh, appeared, they suddenly seem to have lost their appetite for breaking ASICs, and they just uh, accepted them. That's what happened with uh, Zcash, Dash, and Litecoin? Uh, sometimes even claiming that okay, now we we have matured as a coin since we now have ASICs. Um, Monero is a more interesting case. They they think they can still have uh, an ASIC resistant proof of work in this new uh, random X, executing random programs and random CPU programs on their. Uh, self-designed uh, virtual uh, virtual CPU. They've invented a whole new instruction set architecture that you're running uh, random programs and so on. And actually the output of the random programs is then used to generate actually a new version of the program. So 
it's an interesting, uh, though complex uh, construction. And they think this will serve them many years. Uh, my own personal prediction would be that within one to two years, you will also see ASICs for that. And in that case, Monero will finally embrace ASICs with a new one that's ASIC friendly. So, Brin uh, didn't want to go through the stages of grief. They just decided from the start to uh, be both ASIC resistant and ASIC friendly and to smoothly transition between them. For the resistant part, uh, we figured out a way to, to tweak the, 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 kapu, the basic kapu cycle to prevent or to, to penalize lean mining. And we, uh, we accept that we have to tweak it every six months. So that even if someone makes a, an ASIC, it will not have time to uh, ROI. Uh, the way we penalize lean solving is that you have to compute the, the edge endpoints for a whole group of 64 edges at the same time. And this would uh, account for a 64 times overhead on a, on a lean mining chip. So that really makes it less attractive. Um, also, inherently, it still Kakaroo uh, 29 requires would require at least around 64 to 100 megabytes of memory. So those are com quite complex designs. We will not be able to pump them out in a, in a few months. So that's the user system part. For the friendly part. We have uh, Kakatu 31 Plus, and uh, as shown in previous talks, by July of next year or so, that will have been phased out, and we will have um, C32 Plus, which uh, is essentially a proof of static RAM. You need a lot of static RAM to solve it efficiently with uh, minimal memory. Um, maybe in the very long term, CPU caches that are currently maximizing at around 64 megabytes, they might actually reach the 512 megabytes that is uh, needed to solve C32 efficiently, but uh, that's too far out in the in future. So, back to the Kakaroos. Uh, we started out, we launched with uh, your basic uh, Kakaroo. Um, where the goal, uh, where the goal is to find a cycle in a certain uh, certain graph. So the the graph is bipartite, meaning the nodes are split into two sets, and the, all the edges run between the two sets. We have n undirected edges between n upper and n lower nodes. So in this case, we have eight plus eight nodes, and we have eight edges. So. The endpoints of an edge are just generated by feeding the index into the SIP hash function with either a zero appended at the end or a one appended to give you the two endpoints. So you get random n edges and then you're going to look for a cycle. Um, in this case there is, there is a four cycle on the edge instances uh, zero, one, two and five. So the solution is presented then as a sorted list of those four edge indices. Except in Brin we require cycles of length 42. So the first tweak which happened in mid-July was to a new variant called Kakaroot. The extra D denotes um, either that the edges are now directed or it also actually denotes that the likelihood of the probability of a cycle is actually double. You, get, you will get on average twice as many uh, cycles. So we again see that every edge uh, goes between uh, the two halves of the bipartite graph, uh, but now every edge has a direction on it. So in this case, I believe there is still a four cycle if you use edge 1 and then 2, 7 and 4 to get back. This was not the uh, only tweak. Uh, was, there was also uh, a slight change in the way you compute your underlying SIP hashes. 
So this is what it takes to compute a single zip hash. It's a whole bunch, bunch of uh, additions and exclusive ORs and rotations. There are six rotations and the fifth one is now parameterized with the variable amount. So in the standard zip hash that amount is uh, 21, which is also written there as the default if you initiate uh, a zip hash cla class. Uh, but in Kuka root, I changed that to 25, just in case somebody has already constructed uh, an ASIC in which all these circuits are hardwired. This would uh, break that uh, ASIC. And now for the unveiling of Grin's next proof of work, it will be Kakaroon. And the M stands for monopartite. We're doing away with the bipartite graphs. So this is what it looks like now. We have N still directed edges between just N nodes. That means you can also have alt cycles now, for instance, uh, a unicycle, and an edge can just go back from one node to itself. Um, the, uh, the Google Docs doesn't allow me to draw nice uh, half circle edges, so I just wrote, uh, I drew, drew each edge in, in, in two parts with an angle. Um, there is, if you look carefully, uh, still a four cycle here, um, going, I think, edge four, edge one, edge five, and edge six, take it back. Let's see, now I think I'm going to show you how to actually find those cycles in Kakaroo. Or one way to do it. Uh, you start by marking all the endpoints of edges, uh, which are clearly marked here. And then you can kill all the edges whose starting point is not marked, because they have no corresponding incoming edge to follow a cycle. So again, uh, going back, we will see that edge 7 will be eliminated, because there's no incoming edge here, it is not marked. And also uh, edge 0 will be eliminated. Then you mark all the start points of edges. And now you can kill all the edges that do not have their endpoint marked. So that would be just this edge. The endpoint isn't marked, there is no way to continue from this node, so we kill that edge. And in this case, we are left with only uh, cycles. Uh, in actuality, of course, you will have to do many rounds of that marking and killing. And this is already implemented in a, uh, a GPU uh, CUDA solver that I will uh, that I will push to GitHub in the, over the next few days. I will also. So I will have both solvers available in a new Kakaroom uh, directory in the Kaku uh, repository, and I will, I will have the verifier uh, beyond the grid uh, repository as part of the hard fork uh, pull request. Um, one, th one thing we can notice here in this example is that it took all these uh, two rounds to eliminate uh, these two edges, 0 and 3. So in the old style solver we would, in one, f in one round, we would notice that um, uh, that this edge should be eliminated and this edge too because there's no way to continue in this direction. <coughs> In this case, it takes two steps because we separately deal with start points and end points. So what you see with the new solver is that it takes twice as many rounds to eliminate a given fraction of edges. Um, it's possible that people will develop uh, alternative alternative solvers that uh, 
that work uh, differently. Uh, this solver just needed an extra global uh, node map to achieve this. Uh, a little bit about um, a little bit of math. How many cycles do we expect in this copper room graph? Um, so let's go through the motions. If we consider a sequence of four edge indices, like four, one, five, six, uh, in general, a sequence i1, i2, up to il, um, there are n to the power l such uh, sequences, and the probability that such a sequence forms a cycle is just uh, the chance that i1 has the same endpoint as the star point of I2 and etc etc going all the way around which is a probability of 1 over n to the power L so then computing the expected number of such sequences forming cycles is the number of sequences n to the L times the probability you can see it just cancels out so you get an expected number of 1 uh, however for a given cycle like the one there 4, 1, 5, 6 there are L ways to write it as a sequence because you can just rotate the numbers around. So while the expected number of sequences is 1, the actual number of cycles is about 1 over L. Uh, so this is the back, this is the same again as in the old cuckoo and the old kakaroo. Uh, it was just kakaroo that, uh, that doubled the number of uh, solutions. This means that when the hard fork happens, there will be an extra factor of two uh, uh, drop in the uh, effective uh, hash rate. Uh, besides the new type of graph, there is also again uh, another tweak. This time not in the SIP hash function. Actually, Kakaroom is reverting back to the standard SIP hash with a rotation, fifth rotation amount of 21 but it's going to have a slight tweak in the generation of uh, the whole block of 64 edges so in Kakarut when we went through uh, 64 sequences of zip hashes to get the 64 edges we uh, exclusive or each, each uh, intermediate result with the with the final hash. This just makes it so that you uh, you have to go through the whole sequence of all the 64 zip hashes before you can identify any uh, edge in the block. Um, the new Kakaroon takes that uh, a little step further. It doesn't just take the exclusive or with the final hash, but effectively it takes the exclusive or with all the later edges. So I have to go back from the final one and say exclusive or the last one into the one before and that one before into the previous one. So it's like first you compute all the zip hashes and then you go back to the stars exclusive or uh, each one with the next. Uh, and that's, that's the new proof of work. So in summary. Uh, the big change in the new proof of work, Tucker Room, is that it uses monopartite graph and now can find uh, odd length cycles. If you wanted to have a proof of work that only needs uh, three uh, nonces in a solution, you can, you can do that. Um, like Tucker it has directed cycles. Like Tucker it uses standard hash. The edge blocks are computed differently now, exclusive or in all later states. We expect to find 1 over 42 solutions per graph, which is half of the current. Is it resistant to proof of work? And uh, the reference CUDA solver uh, uses a new global node bitmap, which doesn't increase the memory requirement uh, much. It's just uh, 64 megabyte, and it needs twice as many rounds to trim a given, uh, a given fraction of edges. And then I believe concludes the talk.
questions? Why not? Yeah. What, what is called a roof cover? Um, does that extra 64 megabytes knock off um, 2080s because that was kind of tight memory wise for those? I, I mean, like the, the 2080s is kind of tight on those. Oh, um, I think it's a bit tight on those. With my recent uh, implementation of, uh, uh, of the GPU cycle finder, I also changed, I actually also changed the layout. Of the of the buckets in memory to prevent some uh, handicap on uh, on Nvidia cards that we uh, figured out, namely that they cannot really write to more than two gigabyte of uh, video memory at a time. So that actually allows you to to have a much uh, uh, smaller memory use. You can increase the the macro blocking right there uh, to to just approach. Uh, four, four gigabytes uh, of memory. So uh, that should not be that should not be an issue. Any other question? Cool. Thank you, John.